Jesus and Joshua. Dear friends, in today's story, we will see an overview of the book of Joshua and the message it gives us. It is believed that the author of the book of Joshua is Joshua himself. When we start the book of Joshua, we see the birth of a country, Israel. In the next 11 books, that is, till Esther, their history continues. Joshua son of Nun was born in Egypt as a slave from the tribe of Ephraim. When Moses delivered the Israelites from Egypt, he journeyed with them. Joshua's earlier name was Hosea. It was Moses who changed his name to Joshua. The first time we see Joshua is in Exodus chapter 17, when the Amalekites attacked the Israelites who started their journey from Egypt and were weary without water at Rephidim. Moses sent men under Joshua's leadership to fight against the Amalekites. Joshua brought the Israelites to victory under the banner Jehovah Nissi. Then Joshua continued his life faithfully as Moses' aide. Less than two years later, when the Israelites reached the border of their promised land, Moses sent twelve men to spy out the land, one from each tribe of Israel. Joshua was sent as the representative of Ephraim. On returning and giving the report, he believed in God's power more than the size of the impossibilities. He did not join the majority, but stood on God's side with Caleb. Because Joshua did not throw away his confidence of faith which has great reward, God honored him and when that generation of Israelites perished, God saved him and Caleb. When the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend, his aide Joshua, a young man, would not depart from the tent of meeting. It was because of this faith that God gave him the responsibility of leading the Israelites into their promised land when Moses died after 40 years of their journey in the wilderness. Joshua was very enthusiastic in fulfilling the duties God has given him. He used to wake up early in the morning to do what was required of him. Joshua did something no one else in history ever did. He commanded the sun and the moon to stand still until he won his battle. If we could do the same thing today, how many of us would have delayed the rising of the sun to sleep a little longer? But Joshua was enthusiastic and woke up before dawn and completed his tasks. According to God's command, Joshua led Israel into the promised land, fought battles for them, possessed the land and divided the land among them. Like Caleb asked for Mount Hebron, Joshua asked for the land he wanted, the city of Dimnit Serah in the hill country of Ephraim, and he lived there until his death. Joshua faithfully stood by God and he was able to keep his household as well with the God of Israel. Joshua died at the age of 110 and he was buried in the city that he asked for. We have already said in the previous stories that these books and scriptures lead us to Jesus like a guide. Like Moses delivered the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, our Lord Jesus Christ delivered us from the slavery of sin. Like the Israelites who were delivered from slavery in Egypt, we will also face difficulties on our way to our heavenly Canaan. But our confidence is this. The one who called us is faithful and he will lead us till the end. The Israelites were a generation of unbelievers and murmurers, so God destroyed them in the wilderness. Let us not follow their example so that the same thing does not happen to us. Now we will see the similarities between Joshua and Jesus. The meaning of Joshua's name is God is my salvation. It was this salvation that came to earth in the form of Jesus. It was not Moses who represents law that led them to their promised land, rather it was Joshua. Similarly, it is not our good deeds which leads us to heaven, but faith in Jesus. Joshua reminded the Israelites that they should not turn aside to the left or right from God's command, and Joshua did the same. It is not only Israel whom God chose as his own people who can make God's salvation their own. This is understandable from Rahab in the book of Joshua. Rahab understood that the God of Israel was the only true God. So she acted with wisdom, and God saved her and her family. 
anyone can enter this salvation. Joshua, who started his life as Moses' aide, completed it with the title, The Servant of the Lord. In the previous stories, didn't we see that apart from the commands the God of Israel gave, he also revealed to Moses and Joshua a lot of instructions and statutes, and they wrote it in books and on large stones. In the next story, we will see how these writings formed the Bible of today. Then we will move into the next book. God bless you.